Don't let the minority cloud your focus. It won't. I guarantee you. You know why it won't? Because I've seen this happen so much. I've seen it happen with people who voice their concerns or, or, or who, who get a large platform. Joe Rogan would be an example of this. Do you know how many of us right now are saying, please don't change Joe Rogan because of the criticism? Please don't change Aaron Rodgers because of the criticism. We are going, please don't change. But yet, we all go, he's probably going to change. And then we're going to stop watching. We're going to stop listening. The core, the 95% of the core people will leave if that person changes. You guys will leave if I changes, if I change. This post is about whether it's okay and how hard you should be on yourself if you get angry at your dog. And this is based off Ethan uh, Instagram messaged me. And you'll see me make a video on comments or messages if one of two things happen. If either the comment or the message is so well put, right? It's not angry and it's not just some crazy person. If it's like really well put and I think that my 100,000 subscribers or almost 100,000 will get something out of it. If, if other people are thinking the same thing and I haven't yet talked about it, then I will comment to you guys on the comment or the message. Or if I see a comments that are the same, I know people are thinking about it. It's like when I used to teach a dog training class, I would say to my class, I'd say, if, one of, if you're thinking it, if you have a question, I guarantee other people are thinking it. And it's so true, just like in school. So. If there's multiple comments about some theme, then I know a lot of people have that question or have that concern or have that something. Okay, so here's what it says. This is from Ethan. Hi, Joe, I wanted to share with you, you part of my journey because I think it's a good perspective for you to touch on in a video. I think your methods are solid, but in the hands of a level, but only in the hands of level-headed people. I'm gonna get into that, okay? Much of the criticism you receive is, is overblown and because and I believe that is a product of the internet. I'm sure you have become quite affected by the growing number of voices you've exposed to since joining YouTube. The internet can be unforgiving, and there's a lot of people who would bubble wrap the entire world if they could. Don't let the loud minority cloud your focus. Results are all that matters. You are no way brutal. So with that said, I want to bring up a concern I've had while training my own dog. Okay, so we're going to get into the rest of it. I'm going to comment first off on, he says, don't let the... Don't let the minority cloud your focus. It won't. I guarantee you. You know why it won't? Because I've seen this happen so much. I've seen it happen with people who voice their concerns or, or, or who, who get a large platform. Joe Rogan would be an example of this. Do you know how many of us right now are saying, please don't change Joe Rogan because of the criticism? Please don't change Aaron Rodgers because of the criticism. We are going, please don't change. But yet, we all go, he's probably going to change. And then we're going to stop watching. We're going to stop listening. The core, the 95% of the core people will leave if that person changes. You guys will leave if I changes, if I change. The 3% of people that don't like the methods, they'll go, we got him. And they'll still leave. They're not, they don't like me anyway. I know what I'm doing is right and the core audience will leave if I change. And I'm not gonna do what you see people throughout history have done and they cower and they try to make everyone happy and the pressure builds and they change and their people leave them. I know this, I've seen it. I'm 45, I've seen this. I'm not a kid, just learning about this stuff, okay? I've been in the animal industry. I've heard, I was a killer whale trainer at SeaWorld. I've heard the criticism. I know the people that come at animal people. I know the animal people that come at other animal people, okay? All right, so don't worry about that. Nothing's changing. The internet can be, okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, I am no professional dog trainer, nor am I a monk. Okay, I don't know. That. I get frustrated and sometimes I am ashamed of how quickly a trip to the park or an everyday walk can turn into a, 
a bad word, show so quick. Okay, then he actually shows someone, he does a screenshot of someone on my YouTube channel who says kind of the same thing. This is from Joe. Joe says, I'm 200 pounds and I get angry sometimes because he, he really putting wear on my shoulders with his final pull into stuff. And like you said, I'm a strong dude. I give good corrections, but he's actually doesn't even care half the time. So basically this IG commenter, Ethan is talking about how people get frustrated. He gets frustrated. This other guy gets frustrated. So the core of this video is about getting frustrated. Okay. But I'm going to go on because there's two points to this in the hands of non-professionals like myself and the, the other commenter on YouTube, which Ethan screenshotted and Joe, a dog can be hurt. Okay. Let's talk about that. There's something called anecdotal evidence right? I'll refer to Joe Rogan again. Joe Rogan had a doctor on, a controversial doctor. Joe Rogan said, all of, uh, all my friends, this is a month ago, right? When Omnichrome was present, he said, Joe Rogan said, all my friends are sick with Omnichrome. And the doctor said, that's the best evidence you can have of how, what Omnichrome is like. It's like, forget all these other studies. All your friends are sick with it. That's called anecdotal evidence. We don't need to look at this study and we don't need, all your friends are sick with it. It's real, it's, it's, it's anecdotal, but it's real. It is real, okay? So to this point, I've never seen a dog hurt by a correction. I'm not saying it hasn't happened. I've just never seen it. And I've trained 10,000 dogs. I don't, I've never seen a dog get hurt by a correction on gentle leader. Yet if you read comments, every 30th comment is, this is dangerous, a dog's gonna hurt. Uh, okay, I've never seen it. Not one time. That's anecdotal evidence. So where are these dogs getting hurt at? Where are these vets? And they'll go, vets say this. I don't care what vets say. I, I'll, and then I'll, I'll comment back because, because vets are, are, are for the most part weak when it comes to this stuff. I just read to you a few months ago about the a vet behavior group saying you can't, you can't do this dog trainers, you can't do this. They have pressure. I would love to interview a vet and say, oh, how many neck problems have you seen from corrections? And I'm gonna look in their eyes so they can't lie about it, okay? Because it's just not happening in the numbers that people think it's happening. It's just not. It's anecdotal evidence. It's true. Now, has it happened? Sure it's happened. If it's on a prong, is it worth? Is it on a slip, is it worse? Is it on a gentle, is it worth? Is it on a regular one, is it worth? Is it on a gentle? There's varying degrees of it, but all my methods, they're, they're tailored to the dog. Would I do the same thing on a tiny dog than a dog that has a giant neck with three times the muscle I have in my neck? It's different with a small dog than with that dog. But I've just never, I've never seen a dog hurt by it. Could they be hurt? Uh, yeah, I'm sure it can happen. I'm sure it has happened. It doesn't happen to the numbers that people think it happens, okay? All right, I am by no means abusive when I lose my cool, but I want to know if maybe the reason why my dog isn't reacting to the leave and pop method is because I already lost her trust the first few times I lost my patience. All right, it's another point of this, anger. Anger, frustration. I have three kids. The bedtime routine is, has been difficult lately. I have a five-year-old, a 12-year-old, and a 10-year-old, and we're a busy family, okay? The bedtime routine has been horrible, to be honest with you, okay? There's, we get frustrated as parents, and the kids get frustrated, and we're not doing everything perfectly to get them to bed on time and all the stuff that needs to be done before bed. Some days are better than others. Sometimes I get frustrated. Sometimes my wife does. Sometimes the kids do. That's, it's okay. It's okay in life. I'm not gonna sit here. Too many people on TV and in the world, they act like they're perfect, okay? I get frustrated with my kids. I occasionally get frustrated with a dog. You occasionally get frustrated with your kids and with a dog. You don't hit them, dog or kids. Never have dog or kids. But there's frustration, there might be yelling, is it good? No, it probably isn't good actually, but it's gonna happen. Too many people are fake and act like 
they, it, they, it doesn't happen to them. Or on, on maybe on like TV and YouTube and whatnot. We're all human beings and have busy lives and people are stressed right now. Does that mean it's good to get frustrated with your dog? No, it's good to be clear and have boundaries and have rules and implement those with zero anger. Are you gonna do that perfect? No, you're not. So give yourself a break, okay? Give yourself a break on that a little bit, Ethan. And does Ethan need to rebuild trust with your dog so that they know you're the leader? You're probably building trust all day long. I, I, I mean, sure, you can sit, you know, I'm sorry, I get, that's what I say to my kids. If I get mad at them before bed, I go in afterwards and I go, I'm sorry I got mad. And they're, my daughter's like, like mad at me. My son is like, okay, it's okay, dad. Because they're different, just like your dogs are different. They respond differently. But at least I say sorry afterwards. And it's not even yelling. It could just be me getting short or something. But it manifests itself in different ways, right? People are stressed. This is, life is, when you get older especially, have a bunch of kids, bunch of dogs, you have six, you know, give yourself a break. Everyone's doing the best they can. That's the thing too. All the parents I know are doing the best they can. All the dog owners I know, I've never been in a house where people are just like, yeah, I want to put an e-collar on my dog. I want to be hard on No one wants to. They love their dogs. You guys love your dogs like you love your kids. Many people more than they love their kids. But be, you're doing fine, okay? Most likely you're doing fine. If you're not, just because you get frustrated. Also, about how important it is to not lose your cool. He, this is what he wants me to talk about. How, how, not lose your cool because your method mixed with anger is actually what your critics, my critics, pars are partially right about. So it's the first time he, in a very nice way, says your critics are partly right about, I guess, anger, actually. Anger. I think, I think, I don't remember getting that angry in a video. But if it's coming across, then maybe it's coming across that way. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Um, anger, mixed with anger. Yeah, I'm no nonsense. I'm, I'm pretty no nonsense in these sessions. I don't wanna sign these people up for six private sessions. I'm too busy. I will if they need it. I want them to come in, get their dog 80% better, 50% better, and then go about their lives and go to their jobs and raise their kids and raise their dog. I wanna do one session, so I'm trying to get as much done in that one session as I possibly can. So, that dog leaving me that says, I just feel like leaving, not a scared dog who's nervous, but the dog is just like, forget you guys, I'm leaving. Yeah, there's a good little correction in there. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to get as much done as I can. Okay, I'm, I hope I address that a little bit. I'm a huge fan and want to see your channel succeed, but I want to let you know what I am seeing. I would pay for a phone. Okay. All right. So, does that make sense? I want to go back. I, I think I explained a fair amount in there about stuff I've never talked about. I'm not going to change. Okay. There are going to be times when I'm going to talk to the camera like this in a real way, and there's going to be, and but 90% of this channel is training dogs and helping you guys train dogs. Oh, there's another thing in here that he said like twice that I didn't really touch on. Um, in the hands of a professional. People are smart, in my opinion. You guys are smart for the most part. I don't think people are watching my videos and going, well, that dude put the Doberman with the giant Mastiff and I have a giant Mastiff that's aggressive, so I'm gonna go put my... Are you guys really like, I'm gonna go do exactly what this guy did? If you are, you're not very smart. I don't wanna put up a thing and go, only done by me on my... This is very controlled. It is my dog. I've been doing this a long time. It's the property layout matters on why I'm in the pasture first and why I do it through a gate up there. And every decision, has its own very specific way to do it. I refuse to believe that people are unintelligent enough to do that. 
people make fun of like you get a new bottle of pills and there's a silicone thing and it says do not eat and people go this is so dumb but then people are like yeah you should put a warning on your thing like society's too much into we're going to protect everyone and put labels and warnings on everyone so this is my label or warning when it comes to aggression and it comes to something like getting dogs together don't do exactly what i do do you need to be told that really the people i i i don't know i've never watched something and something that looks looks like it's done by a professional and it is kind of dangerous and gone i think i'm gonna do that if people do it don't do that now if it's stop and give a correction on the leash i could go on a walk right now and i'm gonna see people do that that's not my thing it's my deal is different but correcting a dog on a leash is not something i invented where no one can do in society it's being done so the dog stuff the aggression stuff the putting dogs with stuff don't do it it'd be safe if you wanted to i mean i don't know i'm not going to put a label caesar milan started to put only do this by a trained professional at the bottom of the show i watched a video the other day critical of Caesar Mon because I went down this little rabbit hole on dominance and the history of it after I made that video a couple weeks ago that got you guys like so much. Um, they criticized him for it. So they're the ones who told him, the purely positive folks are the ones who said, you have to put a label on this. Then when, they, when he put a label on it, I saw this whole video that's had like millions of views. I forget what it was done by it was some lady talking about how bad caesar milan is and she goes and he had to put a label at the bottom of the show so they made him do it then they criticized him for doing it i'm not gonna i'm not, I'm not gonna kowtow now some people are saying hey you should tell people not to do these methods because they care about me right and some people are just saying it because uh they think people are dumb or they think, or they're, it's like a mini little trap or something. I'm not gonna do what Susan Law did and put a label saying don't do this stuff. You guys are smart. People out there are smart, okay? I'm making videos of what I do. You wanna do it, do it. If you don't, don't. This is what I do to help dogs. And it's catching on, okay? All right, that was a little mini rant. Based on that, um, I will put in the description, I'll put that, that video that I just talked about where I talked about uh, uh, the word dominance and, and uh, the purely positive folks. I'll put that in the, in the description. I hope that clears some things up for you guys. Um, Ethan put it well, so I wanted to address it because I think other people are thinking it at times. Love you guys.